Hello. Welcome back to the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast. I know I say this a lot, uh, and I say it almost every episode, actually, um, but this is such a great episode and conversation today. I am excited for you to listen. Um, my guest today is Eden Schrader. She is a destination wedding photographer turned business coach who inspires creative entrepreneurs, artists, and makers all alike to build a life of artistic growth, of wealth, and of personal power. Today, Eden is sharing how we can create a more aligned and data-driven business through our strategy, through our systems, and by putting that soul back into our work. Um, One note on the technical side of things before we get into today's episode. My microphone, uh, this guy right here, uh, decided to take a little bit of a holiday without notifying me. So my audio is not up to par because it's just straight out of my computer mic, which is is not good. Um, But I know that you're here to listen to Eden and she is dropping all of the knowledge today. So bear with my audio. (laughs) I will definitely be double, triple and quadruple checking um, in future Uh, conversations just to make sure that my microphone is um, here. Let's get into that conversation. Eden, welcome to the podcast. I am uh, very excited to chat today. I know we were just talking about this um, before officially starting the podcast, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this topic, systems and strategy and soul. It's just one, I love alliteration. Um, Any, any, any time I can like break out the, thesaurus and figure out some words that all start with the same letter i'm like this is going to be good um which probably pushes back like launching courses and products and stuff because i'm like i need to figure out some sort of alliteration for this oh same i'm yeah. like alliteration is always my go-to for naming things like i'm yes. like how can i make these all start with the same letter? <laughs> mm-hmm. even if it doesn't really make sense i'm just gonna go yeah. with this yeah and then <laughs> no, be like absolutely. colon marketing course and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's cool. But um, but yeah, thanks for, for being on the show. I'm excited to chat today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, um, give us a little background about you, where you're based, um, all, mm-hmm. all the stuff that you do. Yeah, so I'm Eden, and I am a former destination wedding photographer now. Um, I do business coaching and consulting for creative entrepreneurs and photographers. And when I first started my business several years ago now, I was based in Utah. That's kind of how I fell into weddings in the first place. Mm-hmm. And now I live in Brooklyn. Um, so living a very different life than I was several years ago. Yeah, but- totally different scene there. <laughs> <laughs> very different scene. Um, yes, I'm a very different person, different business. Um, but yeah, now I live in New York City, so I get to work alongside a lot of creatives here, which is really, really cool. Um, a lot of creatives that are really dedicated to also like the business side of being a business owner and creative, which I feel like that can sometimes get a bad rap, which is why I love talking about system strategy and soul. Yes. Um, because it's kind of a thing everyone's terrified of, and it's one of my favorite things um, because it gives us the ability to run our businesses like CEOs rather than paper pushing employees. And that's kind of like at the foundation of everything within my business is I think that creatives should have beautiful, fulfilling businesses, but they should not be the end destination. They should be like tools for a beautiful life. Mm. And so I'm really passionate about helping entrepreneurs kind of push back past that hustle mentality like let's earn six figures and die trying, you know, kind of trend that we've seen for like the last quite a, quite a while. Um, oh, yeah. and instead of businesses that work for them. Yeah. I love that. I am also, I, I, I remember when like that hustle culture was just everything, uh, you know, mm-hmm. good, like probably five years ago or so where everything was hustle, you know, mm-hmm. all, all the <laughs> back to course names and stuff, everything was just like yeah. hustle this and, you know, building your side hustle and all of those things. And just like, I don't want to hustle anymore. Like I want to create a successful business to where I can have the life that I want. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and I love that. I definitely resonate with you there. Um, And I have been loving, I, I, uh, once, once you booked this, I was like, Oh wait, she's got a podcast. I'm going to go listen. And I've just like been binging your, your podcast, Um, which by the way, listeners, you should check it out because it's called um, that's my personal business. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go, go check it out. Very, very like laid back kind of just like chatting with a friend type feel. 
um, mm-hmm. which is my favorite for podcasts. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the the straight up like, all right, and these are the five things that we're going to talk about today. I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, I'm like, we have episodes like that, but even still, it is like so intertwined with yeah. like <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I love that. And uh, you've also been on a lot of my friends podcasts lately. So oh, I'm like, oh, fun. cool. I get to like know Eden a little bit more like listening to like Nathan Jansky and uh, Rachel oh, Traxler. Yes. And I was just mm-hmm. like, they're, they're great. And uh, yeah, they were so yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, it's nice to finally meet you now. now I, I get know. To... <laughs> <laughs> not everyone it's so fun it's fun but yeah well yeah i i love that that is a focus of your education to not just be that because uh, i feel like that that six figure goal line is um it's something to run toward but also there's so much more than that and i feel like a lot of people just hustle 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 to hit that six figures and just you get burnout. A lot of people get burnout once you get there or you're there and then you're just stuck. And it's like, I don't, I have so much work to do now because I've yes. pushed myself to get here. Well, I think that's like six figures is like really, it's like a pretty figure. It really is yeah. just like this kind of like hot catchphrase that we have in the industry right now Mm -hmm. whereas no one or we are talking about it now but for a while it was like well what's going into six figures like are you working 90 hours a week because like that's not fun that's not worth it that's you might as well go back to corporate at that point um like what does your lifestyle need right like where do you live how much money do you need do you have a family like what stage of life are you in like i always tell people i'm like 100k to me when i lived in utah woof amazing flawless i was living like so lovely oh yeah um i owned a home had a big savings account like it was it was great six figures even just cap at six figures 100k in utah was amazing um i live in brooklyn now like 100k is yeah you have to make at least 100k to even like survive here Mm -hmm. um and so that was like a really big push for me to change the way that i move around in my business because i sometimes I work like, or I like working a lot. And sometimes I like, usually I take the summers pretty much off other than my one-on-one coaching and consulting clients. Like I still coach and talk to them. But other than that, I like kind of clocking out. Like I I like being like a kid who has summers off basically is my life purpose. But, um, so I had to find ways to be like, okay, how do I make as much money as I made before? Actually more though, and still not change the way that I want to work, even though, you know, my cost of living is like, five times more than it was where I lived before. So I think it's it's important for people to sit down and be like, yeah, what what money do I need? What money do I want? What do I want my life to look like alongside that? Because yeah, it's it's easy to make a hundred K. If you've shot a hundred weddings at a thousand dollars, or just shoot double headers every weekend and you'll you'll be dying, but you'll have made a hundred K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will have a terrible quality of life, but yeah. you'll hit that six figure mark mm-hmm. and be able to check that off and be like, I'm a six figure yeah. photographer. And Absolutely. yeah, yeah, I think that is, it's so important to really assess where you are and, and not like compare yourself to other people. Cause like, I'm a fairly, I mean like a, a mid-sized town in Texas mm-hmm. and a hundred K here goes a lot further than a hundred K in Brooklyn. And oh my gosh, like, I've looked up yeah. houses in Texas. I wanted to cry. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I would live like a queen. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that's why so many Californians are moving to like the Austin area because mm-hmm. Austin's got that that like LA kind of vibe and it's a tenth of the price mm-hmm. for real estate there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all the locals are just angry, but that's that. it's fine. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like it's, it's very different in comparing yourself to other people. Um, where like where they are just the cost of living and Mm -hmm. in in life like you know i've got three kids and i want to spend time with them i don't want to just hustle 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 and then you know see them for like an hour a day and and that's part of my dream life is being able to work provide for you know myself and the family and then also get to go to baseball games and also get Mm -hmm. to Uh, take my kids bowling and stuff like that Mm. like this is the stuff that i live for and i'm not gonna live to work i'm gonna Mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna gonna work and uh, pay for what i love 
Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I just love that. Yeah, a nice, nice little uh, tangent to start things off yeah. on. It's always tangents. It's all tangents at yes. the end of the day. I love tangents. That's why I put it in the name of the podcast too. Because I'm just mm-hmm. like, like so many conversations just go off on tangents anyway. I'm like, that's where a lot of the the like the good stuff is is there yeah. in those tangents. Um, the Absolutely. unexpected, unexpected things. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, there's a question that I really love asking is, uh, has there been something over like a lesson or, um, some advice that you've gotten over the years that really just like changed the way that you look at life or business or anything like that? Um, I'm trying to think, I have an experience that comes cool. to mind, but I don't necessarily, I'm like, I can think for a second on advice if that's like yeah. what you specifically. Experience is good too. Anything that's really okay, just cool. been like that aha moment of, oh, this changes things. Yeah. So mine is, it's so funny cause I'm like three years removed from it now. So I, I, this story is like such a big part of my business cause it, it really is like one, what changed my life perspective, me personally, my business, mm-hmm. like it was kind of my big life moment and I had it pretty young. I had it at 23, 24. Um, but at 23, I was almost 24. I uh, got a divorce and I was raised Mormon in Utah. So I got married really, really young. Uh And I had been married for nearly four years. I was the sole provider. Um, I paid for my ex's school. I paid for a really beautiful life. I paid, I, I, I paid for a lot of things. And so I, because I was a sole provider and I was needing to pay for so many things in cash, I scaled my business really, really quickly. And I did the hustle thing. Like there, I remember I call it like my 2017 year. I shot 40 weddings in one year, 10 of which were in June and four of those I think were out of state. So I was shooting like triple headers. Like it was crazy. Um, And I was, I was doing it. Like I had a six figure business, but like I was in shambles. Um, and when I got my divorce, um, I lost a lot in my divorce. Um, I lost like almost all my assets. Um, I kept the house since I had bought it myself, but I had only been in it for 11 months. So I had to sell it. Um, obviously got, you know, no money from that. Cause I was only in it for 11 months. Right. Um, zero out of 10 recommend buying a house when you're not in a good relationship. Don't do Uh that. (laughs) Um, but obviously like my life just kind of like, I I call it like my rock bottom. Like I lost everything. I lost a six year relationship. I lost everything basically, but my home, I lost basically everything, but my business, my bank account was wiped clean. I remember I had a hundred dollars left in my bank account at one point, like yeah, is desolate. And, um, the week that I asked my partner to move out of the house, um, I launched a passive income course. I launched my indoor and artificial lighting course. And within the next eight weeks, I earned $40,000. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. So I had launch. like a 40K <laughs> launch, yeah, yeah. which I had never done before. Um, I was really new to education as well. And that launch and my business are like really what gave me the ability to take my life back and to like start again. Like I, again, I lost everything. Um, and I ended up moving to LA, um, ended up moving the week the pandemic happened. Great timing on Great that. Great timing. Yeah. Ye- solid timing. Um, yeah. I feel so, like Utah probably would have been much more open to like, Oh yeah, you can still go to restaurants and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I literally, I had signed on my lease in January and I moved into my apartment the day the, um, LA home order came out. So oh, I wow. was living alone. Oh, man. And so, yeah, I, I spent the next several months completely alone after being in a six year like relationship. Um, and now also with all my weddings canceled and rescheduled and like, it was just this moment of like, I know everyone did a lot of introspection, obviously during early quarantine days, but I'm like, I was doing I was doing a lot. Yeah. You were like, I am <laughs> only introspective right now. Yeah, I'm like, literally we're doing like 10 years of therapy and processing in two months alone in a yes. new state and city. So, oh. um, but I really had this opportunity to kind of like sit back and be like, one, what do I want to do with my life now? Like, I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with my life now. Um, but also like, what do I want to do with my business? Um, like I'm, 
I've been working myself to the bone for like years and years and years to supply for two people um, and to pay for my ex's school and pay for everything. And like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, I I can't keep going like that. Um, And, you know, that was literally like ripped from my hands by the pandemic because I had like, I think I ended up shooting like one wedding that year or two or something. But Mm -hmm. it was really this like clean, clean slate, rock bottom, whatever you want to call it. But where I was just like, okay, like we have to rebuild everything. So let's rebuild it the right way. Like let's, let's not start hustling again. Let's, let's really align with what we're called to. Let's figure out what we love again and what we want to help with and what we want to bring to this world as a human and an artist. And let's do it in a way that's actually sustainable. Let's do it in a way that we're not shooting 10 weddings a month. And, you know, three of those are, four of those are out of state. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that that was really my opportunity to, like, take a look at my life in so many ways. Obviously, I hope people don't have to get a divorce right as a global pandemic happens to, like, learn this lesson. But, like, it was this moment of, like, okay, like, if we're going to rebuild from the ground up, let's let's make it something that we actually love and feel good about. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That is, that is so much going on all of the same same times. Yeah. And, um, and uh, like one thing that I'm thinking of like for, like, like you said, you know, hopefully you don't have to, you know, people, listeners don't have to get a divorce during a pandemic and all that, um, to really find this place. And that's one of the things that I love about podcasts and education and like you sharing your story is that, that gives the listener the ability to really have that introspection now without having all of that going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you don't have to get thrown into rock bottom um, to really start looking at like, do I want to hustle? Do I want to shoot Mm -hmm. 10 weddings in a month where I'm Mm -hmm. traveling all over the place and just, you know, have you know 15 minutes in an entire month to be able to stop and sleep and eat mm-hmm. um and yeah that's yeah that is that's so so much um and 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 it's i don't know i feel like that's for a lot of us that is the time that we have um once we hit that burnout or once we hit um you know rock bottom or something that that's whenever we have that ability to be like okay, I'm going to sit here and figure out how to build this back and build it back better to where you're not building up like, okay, I'm going to go hustle and book all this stuff again. Uh, Cause I uh, also like, I got so burnt out in 2017, 2018 where I was shooting 40 something weddings a year and was hardly making anything. Like I was making like maybe 50, 60 grand off of Jeez, 40 weddings. Yeah. And, uh, and part of that was the market. Part of that was, um, I was undervaluing myself a ton and, uh, and then like getting to sit and, and learn and just, uh, learn from other people and be like, okay, is this what I want to do? Is this the hustle that I want to keep going out there shooting double and triple header weekends for pennies or yeah. restructure everything? Um, and I think that's, that's really, uh, it's, it's something that's a little bit, uh, scary for, for a lot of people to really go out there and and restructure stuff, which I know that like, I mean, uh, what, what we're going to be talking about with like systems and, Mm -hmm. and structure and all of that really helps, um, put that footing down. Are there, are there like some structure or some systems in, uh, just like a normal photography business that people may not realize or even systems that they can use yeah I think like what is fun and like can be daunting it's twofold but like Uh is that basically everything you do in your business can fit into a system in some sense in the fact that like you're probably doing there's pretty rarely something you're doing in your business that you are never going to do again or like only you're going to do every once in a while like your client workflows that's a system and like your clients should be following kind of like a series of checkpoints every time same with like your financial systems right like even if that's just that you're sitting down monthly and keeping track of your bookkeeping and then making sure that you put aside 27 percent for taxes like whatever it may be um phone calls, actual sessions, you know, guides that you send them, even email templates, like all of these are technically systems. And 
before you dive into the systems, I'll say what I always recommend for business owners is looking at this goal first. Because I think this kind of even goes back to what we were first talking about, where it's like your business should be fulfilling, not only for you financially, but you personally, you emotionally. It should also provide for a life that is fulfilling in those ways. And so sitting down with yourself and being like, what do I want to bring to the table as an artist, as a human? What do I want my life to look like outside of this business? What do I want my client relationships and experience to look like within the business? Like get really, really clear on that first, because that's what you're going to build the systems and strategy around. It's kind of like Mm -hmm. the foundation. Your soul and your brand should be at the foundation of your business so that they bleed into everything you do, right? If you're really personable and friendly and extroverted, that's that's probably naturally going to be a part of your brand. And that can then be a part of your workflows. Maybe you always go get coffee before a session. And that's just like a part of your workflow. That's a part of your client systems. Um, but like really, really get honed in on your personality, what you want to bring to the table a human as an artist as whatever it may be and then start building the systems and strategy around that but the first thing that i recommend when it comes to like building out your own systems is like sit down and like brain dump everything that you do in your business and it's gonna look really scary at first yeah (laughs) (laughs) um it's gonna look terrifying this is pages and pages of things Yeah. yeah but i always tell people i'm like write it down like write it down like down to Instagram stories, whatever it is, and then sort it, sort it into two different ways. Sort it one by things that need to be done like daily, weekly, monthly, or as needed, right? Like an as needed would be like filing taxes, updating your website. Like those are done, you know, either quarterly, whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you'll be surprised how little things need to be done daily. Like it's usually like emails post on Instagram if you don't have that automated, um, you know, if you have a shoe editing, that kind of thing. Um, but then also look at that list and be like, what do I do repeatedly? Because repetition is the opportunity for automation. Every time you see something getting repeated, that's an opportunity for a system. That's an opportunity for something to be automated or simplified or, you know, if you're message, I can go on and on about this. So literally tell me to like stop bring it into life. <laughs> let's go on and on i love it (laughs) but it's like you've got to think like there's so many like your clients are basically you're doing the same thing for them on paper every single time Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean you have to make their experience not personal and tailored to them but like in what ways can you make things simpler and therefore serve them better because you have more time and energy outside of just like moving the needle constantly like if you are sending the same email to every single one of your clients with location ideas make that a pdf if you're basically saying the same thing every time you get an inquiry make it a template and just tweak it a little bit every time you get that inquiry to personalize it um you know if you find that you're you know you have certain content that performs really, really well on your social media, make it a system that you go in once a month and you collect that data and you see how you can repurpose it. Like there's so many ways to bring in these systems because your business is a lot more, it's a lot more like cyclical than you realize. And once you're able to kind of brain dump all of that on paper, it gets a little bit more obvious and you're like, Oh yeah, I do do that. Like, every day or every week or every month like what how can i make that simpler for myself yeah i think that's really important because like just dumping everything down in front of you to where you can actually visualize it because i'm a visual learner i'm a visual Mm -hmm. like hands-on type person and dumping everything down because i did that where i went through item by item from beginning of the client experience to the end and i was like there's like 190 steps in here this is insane um mm-hmm. but like I, as creatives we're often like we often boast about like well you know every client is very different and everyone is unique and everyone gets these different experiences so i can't like automate this kind of stuff because it might be different for for this one uh than this this other one but whenever you dump everything down you're like actually these these things over here i'm doing with every single client mm-hmm. and inquiries they're all coming in the same way you know so you're you're responding to every single one of them so having a template saves you so much time like my my responses to inquiries now are like 20 30 seconds tops because i'm just Mm -hmm. i've got the template i know where to put in the personal little details to make it feel like i wrote this whole thing and then Mm -hmm. 
schedule it for five minutes from now so it doesn't seem like it's so much of a template right whenever like it comes a, right, out. Right, yeah. it. No, yeah. truly, but like it, it, even beyond that, right? Like there's, I think one of my favorite things to tell people to automate is I'm like, please, even if you don't want to use a CRM, like get a Calendly because I'm like, do you know how much yeah. time you've wasted going back and forth on emails on to find a, a meeting It's time? the like, worst. It is so bad. Is my least favorite thing. That are you available next thing. Tuesday at this time? Oh no, I'm not available. Then I could do Thursday and like just you, here's you my calendar. So much time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Having that that transformed my business. Getting oh, Calendly. It's, it's low key my favorite thing about having a CRM. I know oh, that yeah. there's way better things that a CRM offers, but like that one specifically, yes. I just like I love being like you just book one works for you. Like uh-huh. you just you do what you need, and I'll see you there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing, like, I, I didn't do that for the longest time because I'd had other friends who, who had set up calendars. And I was like, I don't know, like, I want to be flexible to my clients. I don't want to nail down, like, I'm only available, like, Tuesday evenings or Friday mornings or something. And it wasn't until I realized, like, oh, if they go through my calendar and then they say they can't find anything, then I can say, well, I could actually fit you in Friday morning but I'm putting down what is normally available for me. And then Mm -hmm. they usually make that work. Uh, Absolutely. I feel like it turns you into, right? Like we've all heard the comparison of, you know, a client comes to you, for example, and is like, hey, I can't pay you. Like I'm not getting paid for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to have to pay you late, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Um, They're not going to do that to their cell phone provider. They're not going to do that to their utilities company. They're not going to do any of that. Like I remember I have this friend and she told me that one time she didn't collect a payment before a wedding and the mom of the bride came up to her at the wedding. It was like the remainder of the payment. Mm-hmm. And the mom of like the bride or one of them came up to her and was like, hey, sorry, we actually like decided to last minute buy a house. So we're going to be a couple months late on our payment. And she was already there. Yeah. And I was like, that's so messed up. Like they would never do that to like their utilities company, their bank, whatever it is. And I found that like the more structured you can make your business, the more people respect it like an actual business. And I weirdly found that hours is one of like the first ways you can give that impression of like, these are the dates I'm available. And that doesn't mean you can't break your own rules. You're the boss. Like you Mm -hmm. said, if they're literally never available, like I've worked with clients who are like, doctors or lawyers and they have weird schedules right yeah make it work but giving them just this like hey this is when we're available that's it like that usually people will make it work yeah usually they make it work and if they can't because they have you know odd hours for their job they'll either one be up front with you and be like hey we've got weird schedules so Mm -hmm. like i i've had a couple like you know, uh, truckers or like, Oh, like late night, uh, into the morning nurses that have Mm -hmm. been clients before. And they're like, yeah, my schedule's all weird. So I was like, that's cool. I can work with you. Uh, But yeah, it's, I, I think you're, you're totally right about having that structure sets you apart as more of a professional than just like, Oh yeah, you're just like, a friend that I can mm-hmm. be like, oh, well, let's work on my terms. Even though you're the business, I'm going to tell you when I want to do this. And then so. you, you know, the, the customer is always right type deal of like, no, I want Wednesday night and you're going to have to fit that into your schedule. So mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely sets you more as a professional, more of a business and uh, even you know, subconsciously, they respect more of those that those hard boundaries of Mm -hmm. this is when I'm available. This is when you can book even with like, uh, when I respond to emails, like having those hours of like, you know, nine to four, Mm -hmm. after four, don't expect an email from me until nine Mm o'clock tomorrow. I may send some emails at like 10 o'clock while I'm finishing up some editing or something, but don't expect it. No, exactly. I think it also really, it gives you a good insight into if someone's actually like an ideal client with you as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I mean, you've probably seen it as we've emailed. We always have an automatic responder on that's like, hey, sometimes we take up to 72 hours to get back to you. And like, that's because I don't like, I I like my personal time. I like my team having personal time. Like, it's Mm -hmm. really important to me that we are not glued to our screens 24-7. You're not living Um, in your inbox. Yeah, no. And like, 
it's very rare, but if someone was to ever be like, Hey, that's like, if they're inquiring with us and they're like, Hey, that's mm. unacceptable. I need a faster turnaround time. I would just be like, Oh, that's totally fine that you need that. But someone else is going to have to help you. Cause it's, it's not going to be me. Like yeah. I'm not going to be changing my entire life and business structure. So it's okay if you need that, but it's just not going to be me. <laughs> Who yeah. gives it to you? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be the 20 minute turnaround type person. No. And, mm -mm. Yeah. It's, it's those setting those boundaries, like really gives you more freedom, which mm -hmm. seems counterintuitive whenever mm -hmm. you think about boundaries, like confining you, but it mm -hmm. gives you that freedom to be like, if, if that doesn't work for you, that's okay. There is someone else out there and, and, and there is someone who will be a better fit because you're yes. going to be frustrated every time that you email me. Um, but also yeah. like, I love that. Um, that automatic uh, responder of like, hey, I'm going to get back to you, you know, 48 to 20 or 72 hours. Mm -hmm. That sets those expectations with your clients and with the, the leads to where they're like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, I don't need to sit around waiting for this response to come in in the next day, although yeah. it may. But yeah, it yeah. Could, could be a fun um, surprise. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, cool. I know that by Friday I should hear back. That's cool. I'm mm -hmm. going to go yeah. on with my life. And exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's that's so good. So with the like figuring out just like that that dump of everything mm -hmm. and and seeing what can be automated, what is that um, those those systems that you already have in place that you can you know uh, really fine tune? Um, mm -hmm. How can we take that and just like create a good strategy to push the business forward? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things that, again, I know we touched on this beginning in the beginning, but like business things can be really scary to people, especially mm -hmm. creatives, right? Like we're creatives for yeah. a reason. Our yeah. brains don't usually like want to operate in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I talk to people about their data, it usually really panics them. Like, I'm like, yeah. what data are you using in your business day to day? Like, what are your strategies? And they're like, what? What? Are you, what? Numbers? Yeah. Analytics? What? No, literally. <laughs> um, and um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people and there's no, I always tell my coaching clients, I'm like, there's no wrong answer. Like, it's not like you're doing anything wrong. We're just yeah. going to improve upon it. But like, what is your strategy and what is your data? Like, what's your data looking like? And a lot of people don't know or they don't look at it. And uh, we are actually provided like a lot of data in our business. There's the obvious things, you know, like Instagram analytics or mm -hmm. Pinterest analytics or things like that. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunities to collect data. Um, you can have that in your contact form of like where they found you. Um, you can have Google analytics. You can look at your reviews to see if there's something that they're really, really commonly touching on, right? Like, is it that you make them so comfortable and every single person is saying that? Or is it that like you gave them something that looks like an absolute art piece? Like what is it that people are saying about you repeatedly? Yeah. Um, but looking at the, that data, whether that's like what performs best, um, is there always a spike in sales when you talk about something in particular? Like our team has tracked that like we never sell more coaching packages than when I talk about my personal life. Like that is what converts better than anything is like me showing you that I, I, I talk the talk and I walk the walk. Like I, I have a beautiful business, but I also like, you know, half of my like branding photos are me just like topless at beaches in Spain because that's what I like doing in my summers. Like, yeah. um, and that's really important for people to see that I'm like, yeah, this is, you can run a really successful business. So when it comes to strategy, look at when you're getting increases in inquiries, look at, you know, what is being responded to the best. Um, don't, don't hyper-focus on, vanity metrics like virality like i think virality is just so overhyped at this point like yes. that's great if something is viral but like are you converting like look at the days that you're actually selling things or booking things to see like what you did that day that could be making it go like that right like if you had a huge influx of inquiries one week go to your back to your socials and be like did i do something differently that maybe pushed this mm -hmm. um and keep track of that like keep track of that data whether that's in notes or you know maybe you have systems to keep track of those things but like keep track of what people are actually responding to and what is having an roi because if your 
doing something over and over again that isn't actually helping you, like let's say it's not bringing in inquiries and it's taking a lot of time, there's no reason for you to be doing that. Just scrap it. That's time that you could have with your kids, have free time, have traveling, like keep track of those things so that you can just get more strategic about showing up in the ways that you know work and then you could scrap the things that don't work so it's not just wasted time yes yes a hundred percent i am a hundred percent for that like i remember i was i was on that like post three times a day to instagram train a few years ago and i looked at my analytics i looked at where my leads were coming in i was like i get a handful of leads coming in from instagram most of my stuff comes from my blog and from google so mm-hmm. why am i focusing three times a day trying to put all this stuff together for Instagram when that's not where the money is coming in. And it wasn't until I actually looked at the data and figured out where leads were coming in that I shifted and I was like, okay, this time that I'm doing like Instagram is just fun for me now. Like Mm -hmm. I do, I do the stupid little reels and stuff that are just like, I know this is going to like land for 12 people. And mm-hmm. everyone else is going to be like, I'll give them like a sympathy, you know, double tap here. But, <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I'm like my people, they're going to, they're going to like this, you know, some sort of, mm-hmm. you know, the mm-hmm. office inside joke thing. Like mm-hmm. people are going to get that. It's going to be fun. And I'm going yeah. to enjoy making this, but I'm not going to, mm-hmm. going to, you know, do that hustle again and, and put out a bunch of stuff that just falls flat because yeah. you get burnout doing that. Uh, but yeah, I think that is so important. So yeah, listener, if you do not know where your leads are coming in, like that's another great thing about a CRM is mm-hmm. like I run that uh, that lead source uh, report every quarter and just see one how many leads came in, how many, like what was my percentage of booking, and was it too high? Do I need to raise my prices? Was it too mm-hmm. low? Do I need to you know, work on my, uh, my discovery calls and how I'm actually responding to people. And it gives you a lot of information of how to move forward in your business and not just continue to do the same thing because you see other people saying Instagram where is where it's at. TikTok is where it's at post five times a day. And yeah. oh you God. just get no. <laughs> overwhelmed with that. I'm like, no, social media is just a fun thing for me. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that's what I want to keep it as. It's just yeah. fun. Well, and that's what I, we actually have like, in case you don't know which social media works with your personality, we have like a whole free intuitive marketing quiz that I always suggest to people because like at the end of the day, every marketing platform works like Facebook ads work, Instagram works, blogging Mm -hmm. works, SEO works, they all work, but that means you don't have to do all of them. Like when you log in and someone's like, this is what you need to do to make six figures. It's like, no, that worked for you. It doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. And the plus side of that is that like, yeah, you can just choose what's going to be fun for you. Focus on that. Like if there are platforms that you don't like, like if you don't like making five videos a day please don't start a tiktok like don't do that you're gonna hate it it's gonna be miserable for you and then it's going to suck all of your time because you're just going to be scrolling watching everyone else's like this is research (laughs) i'm (laughs) researching i'm on the clock Uh um but yeah no i think it's important to again that's like kind of where the soul comes in of just like have check-ins with yourself on what is actually enjoyable because if you're not enjoying your job and you're self-employed you should just go back to the office like that's kind of my if my like business ever becomes something which i won't let it but hypothetically (laughs) if my business became something i hated catch me getting like pto and healthcare like included in my job and just going back to the office because like if i hate my job i might as well hate it with benefits like (laughs) that seems silly to be self-employed and hate your job yeah and and not have to think about your business outside of the working hours it's like Mm -hmm. that is one thing that i do miss about a nine to five is like i never thought about my nine to five after five o'clock i was Mm -hmm. like i know that i have to wake up in the morning and go back to work but i'm not Mm -hmm. thinking about how can i do this better and how can i Mm -hmm. find more people to work with i'm like i will show up and the work will be there and um but yeah but i love what i do and uh i am i'm like you i'm like i am not gonna let this become something that i hate and Mm -hmm. i think that 
like our businesses evolve with us and Mm -hmm. that is really important to not get stuck in well this is how i've been doing it for the last five years so this is what my business is like it or not it's like you're the boss you can change things you're literally the boss you can change it it's which is fun (laughs) yeah yeah and i think that's that's really um a, a, a really good point of something that's maybe overlooked sometimes is having that soul as part of your business strategy and Mm -hmm. making sure that what you're pushing toward is what you actually want. If you Mm -hmm. don't need six figures, if you're living in a place where like 60 K is more than enough and you don't have to kill yourself to, to hit six figures and to have that status, Mm -hmm. then, you know, figure out what you love and what your like ideal life would look like and, Mm and, push for that and, and create those strategies and everything so yeah. even this has been so good i, I have thank loved you all of thanks so much for coming uh, for coming on thank you that's yeah. me having a podcast and yes. just naturally saying thanks for coming on thank you for having I, me on i have almost said that a few times being on other podcasts i've always cause... worried i was gonna say it and i did it, yeah. it, the day is well gone. i i am glad uh to come on the show today and and get to talk to you <laughs> um, but yeah thanks so much for uh for being here this was really great before we kind of wrap up and let people know uh where to follow you and all that um what is something that you're loving this week it could be literally mm-hmm. anything uh you know a, a book or movie or something that you you saw recently or just you know a new house plant Ooh, great question. Um, I launched a new business yesterday, which I'm very excited about. That is nice. what I'm currently loving. Yeah, <laughs> like on, that is on exciting. On a big scale, <laughs> on a small scale, I antiqued these really cute little um, pig vases. I got two of them, and they Ooh. like, I'm like, can people see the video on this? I'm like, I could yeah. literally show you them because I keep them by my desk. Nice. <laughs> but they're like filled with tulips and they're just like little pigs oh that's cute and their mouth opens like a spout and oh my that's favorite. cool and i have two of them i like the i like they're really just like really happy facial expression too it's just and their mouth is like a spout that the water comes out of it's that's, very cute that's perfect yeah <laughs> that's mine those were the most random <laughs> that's the best awesome. yeah i i love that i love finding like a good antique store or uh or like thrift store where you find the those gems because there's yes. a, a, a lot of turds out there but then you'll find yes. like something that's just like why is this even here like mm-hmm. this should be in a museum or something this is Absolutely. amazing there i can't been... say these were museum level pieces but yeah. i do but love still they, 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 yeah <laughs> they, they they fit your aesthetic person perfectly yes, i'm very happy with them they're very fun <laughs> Well, nice. Very cool. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm loving this week. I've been uh, back to, I, I've been traveling uh, a lot this month, or I guess last month now uh, in April. Yeah. And um, so I'm back to primary parent duties and cleaning around the house and all that kind of stuff. So Very nice. as I wash dishes, I watch movies for like 20 minute little segments. And um I'm a big horror movie fan. Um, one of my favorites is a movie called Orphan um, because it's like I love. I don't love like the the slasher type horror movies. Mm-hmm. I love the ones with like the crazy plot twists and mm-hmm. just like anything that can make me just be like, wait, what? What just happened? Like I did not see that coming. Um, those are my favorite movies, no matter what genre. And... It's not horror, but have you watched Gone Girl? I have not. I have needed to. The book was amazing. And okay, you've seen the book. Okay, so you know the plot twist. Okay. Yes. That's yeah. I love but, that movie. But also like I wanna see because uh isn't isn't it Ben Affleck? Isn't he the It's Ben Affleck and um I just forgot her name, which sucks because yeah. she's amazing in it. Because she because that was like what, like ten years ago or something, and she's now a, yeah, really, a really big it's star. Pike. It's yes. Rosamund Pike. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I need I need to watch that. Um, watch that one. It's amazing. Yes. I'll I'll do that one next. But um, but yeah. So uh, uh, Orphan is one of my favorite uh, kind of horror thriller movies um, mm-hmm. because of the plot twist, and um, they did a like a prequel um, called The Orphan: Colon The First Kill or something, and without spoiling the first movie, it's 
it was good. I I wondered if it was going to be as good, which I don't think it was mm-hmm. as good, but there was still a good plot twist in this one. Um, obviously not as big as the first one uh, for those that are uh, in the know of what was going on. But yeah, it's it was a good one. I enjoyed it. It was a nice Very little, nice. you know, over a couple of days uh, watching it. Uh, but yeah, I need to watch Gone Girl. Yeah. I think it's, it's on, on my... Too. Yeah. I know it's on one of the many streaming platforms that I'm subscribed to. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I know it's on multiple and that's like, that's my favorite movie. I think it's so good. Yeah, yeah. I love those, the those uh, the the mind twisters of, mm-hmm. of just something different. Like uh, one of my favorite movies is the uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just, yeah, so- all all the things but okay <laughs> real sweet well um eden where can people find you online where can they follow along and uh and all the things yes um so pretty straightforward i'm eden straighter on like everything um and my podcast is that's my personal business um but i always recommend starting either with the podcast or my website because we have a ton of freebies on there like everything from learning art like flash photography to pinterest marketing to um like we have wedding questionnaires we have like so many freebies i love our freebies so i always suggest starting there to kind of dive in and yeah the podcast as well awesome well cool and i will have links to all that in the show notes for everyone um as uh yeah so you can you can go follow and listen and and uh and all the things eden but yeah thanks so much for having me john absolutely thank you so much for being here yeah have a good one thank you for listening to another episode of the wisdom and the tangents podcast i totally got distracted with those cute little uh thrifted pigs that uh, Eden was was sharing with us. And I didn't follow up at all about the whole freaking full business that uh, she mentioned she had just started. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, if you're interested, which I'm sure you are, it's called Amara. And it is a creative agency there to reshape the way that brands and entrepreneurs are showing up online for their businesses. I included a link in the show notes. So definitely go check that out. And you can find that as well as all of the show notes at podcast.allheartphoto.com. This podcast was recorded in front of a live audience on YouTube as well as in the Wisdom and the Tangents podcast group on Facebook. Join the conversation next time and you can ask your questions for me and my guests and we will answer them live on the episode. You get to be part of the conversation. You can follow us on Instagram at wit.pod. It's W-I-T-T dot P-O-D. Eden is at Eden Strader. And you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at All Heart Photo. If you like today's episode, share it with a friend, share in your stories or share the YouTube link. And I would love to see that. So definitely tag us because I always like to cheer y'all on because listening to these podcasts, implementing the things that you're hearing from myself and my guests and all the experience uh, that Eden was sharing today. I know that that is moving you forward in your business and I am so excited for you. So tag me so I can cheer you on. Until next week, I will uh, see you around here. Bye, y'all.